Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mira Lamin and I'm a surgical breast oncologist and oncoplastic breast surgeon, also the Associate Director of Breast Surgery for the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Today I would like to discuss with you surgical options for breast cancer. The topics covered would be why do we need to know about breast cancer? What are the risk factors for breast cancer? How do we detect breast cancer? How do we characterize breast cancer? How do we treat breast cancer? What information would be helpful to know about breast cancer? Breast cancer has the highest number of new cases each year for females. According to the American Cancer Society, it is estimated that there will be 275,000 new cases of breast cancer each year. It is the second leading cause of death after lung cancer for females. The mortality of breast cancer slightly increased initially from 1975 to 1989 but since then has decreased rapidly for a total decline of 40% through 2017. Over 375,000 breast cancer deaths were avoided in U.S. women from 1989 to 2017. This decline in mortality was connected to improvements in treatments and an earlier detection. And this is one of the big reasons to know about breast cancer. To begin with breast cancer risk factors, let's start with factors that can be changed. Physical activity, moving three to four times a week for about 30 minutes. Obesity, how much weight do you have? Alcohol consumption, anything after one drink can increase your breast cancer risk. Hormonal treatment use, breastfeeding, oral contraceptive use, and the number of children you have. Some of the non-modifiable risk factors, which cannot be changed, are being female, your genetics, your age, what is the family history, what is the breast density? What age somebody gets menopause? What is their personal history of breast cancer or benign lesions? And their age of menstruation. Moving on, how do we detect breast cancer? What are the signs and symptoms? A lump in a breast has to be worked up. If the nipple looks pulled in, we need to check it out. Sometimes it starts with dimpling or skin changes or redness or rash that doesn't go away or that could be dripping of nipple discharge from the nipple or other lesions. The next step is breast cancer screening. According to multiple national organizations like American Cancer Society and NCCN and other organizations, we start with mammogram at age 40. After that, there are other supplemental tests like ultrasound, MRI, and which can be added based on risk. Based on the mammogram, you might be told there are different breast densities. It could be a fatty breast, scattered fibroglandular density, a heterogeneously dense breast, or an extremely dense breast. Some of these patients might then require digital mammography, digital breast tomosynthesis, ultrasound, or MRI. The next step in knowing your risk is using your personal details and family history and then calculating your risk. Some freely available tools are available from National Cancer Institute, and there are further ones that a genetic counselor and your physician can help you determine your risk of getting breast cancer. Going on to breast self-exam. There hasn't been clinical evidence demonstrated proving a benefit for breast self-exam, so a lot of the societies do not really recommend routine breast self-exam. But if you are interested, these are the different places and ways you might be able to do self-breast exam. In general, it is about awareness. So in the shower, in the mirror, either lying down on your back or laying on a surface. As we start knowing about breast cancer, let's get to know the anatomy of a breast. Breast is comprised of lobes or lobules that make milk and ducts that take the milk to the nipple. And cancer of the duct is called as an invasive ductal carcinoma. Cancer of the lobes is an invasive lobular carcinoma. There are some cancers that have mixed features or mixed mammary carcinoma with ductal and lobular features. We need to know what is the stage of the breast cancer, which comprises of tumor, size of the cancer, nodes, has it spread outside, in terms of the breast, it would be the axilla or the armpit and metastases has it spread outside of that area into other organs. The next helpful information is prognostic factors. Each physician 
puts together multiple different areas and builds a profile of the breast cancer in terms of estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, HER2 new receptor, He67, the grade of the tumor, the size of the tumor, the lymph node metastases, and other additional tests like oncotype or mammoprint. This helps to know how bad a cancer is, how aggressive can it be, what is the likelihood it will come back, or how do we prevent it from spreading. Going on to treatment of breast cancer, it benefits from a multidisciplinary team approach, which comprises of multiple physicians, like the breast cancer surgeon, the medical oncologist, the radiation oncologist, the reconstructive surgeon, genetic counselors, physical therapists, and also other supportive services like nutrition. Moving on to surgery options. What are the factors that influence surgery? Number of cancers, size of the cancer or cancers, size of the breast, the medical conditions or comorbidities like smoking, diabetes, their weight or hypertension, also the genetic history of a patient, and also a big portion of that is the patient choice or shared decision making. The different components of surgery are removal of the breast mass and axillary staging of the cancer. The removal can be done by partial mastectomy or lumpectomy or a mastectomy. And the axillary staging is done with a sentinel node biopsy or an axillary dissection. The first option, partial mastectomy or lumpectomy. This involves removal of the breast cancer and some surrounding normal tissue around it or the margin around it, but not the entire breast. It can be combined with simple oncoplasty closure to prevent or reduce puckering, indentation of the breast, and hide the scars around the areola, folds of the breast, so that they are not visible. Some of the other advanced techniques that can be combined with partial mastectomy can help the patient have a breast reduction or a lift at the time of cancer surgery. A mastectomy involves removal of the entire breast tissue. There are different kinds of it. A simple mastectomy involves removal of the entire breast, but there's no reconstruction performed at the time of surgery. A skin sparing mastectomy leaves behind most of the skin for the breast while removing the nipple and the areola and is combined with immediate reconstruction procedures. The next available procedure is a nipple areola sparing mastectomy. It preserves the entire skin envelope and along with the nipple and areola giving one of the most natural appearances to the breast. The procedure is combined with immediate reconstruction also. There are two different kinds of reconstructive procedures usually available, implant-based or expander-based, and autologous or using tissue from one's own body. Going on to axillary staging, a sentinel lymph node biopsy involves removal of lymph nodes in the armpit or the axilla. The sentinel nodes are thought to filter the breast cancer cells and are one of the first lymph nodes in that pathway. By injecting dyes, we find a roadmap and find these nodes. The node is evaluated for presence or absence of cancer. An axillary dissection involves removal of around 10 to 20 lymph nodes in the armpit. It helps to determine the extent of the disease and it removes the cancerous nodes. The hospital course and the post-operative course for breast cancer patients usually has patients go home the same day or the next day. Most pain is controlled with oral pain medications. The wounds are closed with absorbable sutures that do not require removal. Some patients have drains that remain for few days to few weeks. There are no diet restrictions. Comfortable arm motion is encouraged. Sometimes more limited arm motion might be recommended for patients with axillary dissection and reconstruction. A follow-up appointment is usually scheduled for two to four weeks postoperatively. Radiation therapy can be done to the whole breast or to a part of the breast with intraoperative radiation therapy or brachytherapy catheters. The indications are all partial mastectomy or lumpectomy patients, mastectomy patients with positive nodes, tumor more than five centimeter or positive margins. What is systemic therapy? Systemic therapy can be chemotherapy or hormone or endocrine therapy. It reduces the chance of cancer spreading and it also helps to reduce the chance of recurrence. 
It can be done neoadjuvantly or preoperatively or after the surgery, it's called adjuvant or postoperative therapy. So looking at all of these different options, we can imagine there are so many questions facing breast cancer patients. To start with, lumpectomy plus radiation or mastectomy, both have equal survival. And it's the patient choice in majority of the cases. This is where knowing the patient's priority helps us help them make the decision. Next, lumpectomy with oncoplastic surgery or without. Based on patient's body habitus and their other priorities, we can help them with this surgery. Also, women with large breasts, sometimes they have shoulder pain, back pain. Would they be a candidate or would they be interested in getting a breast reduction or a lift at the time of cancer surgery? Mastectomy with reconstruction or without? Patients can be equally happy based on their choice between both of these options. Going on to one of the other things that influences surgery is other therapies that might be needed, like chemotherapy or hormone therapy. Should the surgery be done before or after? Based on the aggressiveness of the disease, sometimes surgery is done after chemotherapy or hormone therapy. So as we explore this question further, patients feel very overwhelmed with all of these different decisions that they have to make. They don't want to choose the wrong door. They feel stuck. There's two doors, red and blue. They don't want to choose the wrong one. At that time, I try to tell the patients that there might be a different option for each patient. Thank you for joining me as we talked about breast cancer and the different surgical and treatment options available. For more information, please go to cancercenter.com.